faster and furious, sir. And that's the way you juniors and seniors want it. You lived it before, that's why you were final 14. You answered the foul, and it was time to answer the foul. Well, this year the goal right itself is win the championship. We win the Big Ten championship first, we answer the bell starts the All right, so 20 after, be ready to go. Put your game face on, and let's get after it. has been dominated of late by the Spartans. They've won their last, the one last nine meetings. The last Hawkeye win was February 2nd of 2011. Since the 08-09 season began, 13-1, the record for Michigan State. Nair driving inside, and Nair with a good explosive first step to get to the rim. Got a hurry, fade away for Ellis, rolls off, and a tip jam! Deontay Davis soaring in Ooh. to flush it. Utah off the ball fake, drives inside the dish to Yule, and he's not going to get it up there. Second chance, though, and Iowa's on the board again. Forbes on the attack, trying to cash in, and he does. Bryn Forbes with his first two. Hawkeyes rewarding their fans, a four-point lead. Nice spin by Woodbury in the reverse. Around that screen, can't connect this Woodbury with the offensive board. Jock's looking like he's going to try again, and it's rejected by Davis. Tip won't go. The second tip does for Costello. That's a big pop. Oh, boy, is that big. Four to shoot. Harris to Costello. Now Harris with one on the shot clock at the foul line. Won't go. Costello, the offensive rebound in the putback. But this would be to start their week. Shot on the bounce to Utah with a left hand. Nice take. And Beautiful. A Flush by Goins. That was well done by Michigan State. 13 for Gazelle. 16 the lead. And Ellis quiets the crowd at Carver Hawkeye. To say they needed that would be the understatement of 2015. Six now for Woodbury. Good job by Goins. Really nice job oh, by Goins. What a pass and a finish by Costello. Spin by Gazelle for two. Here's Harris, re-entering, reversing, and getting the two. Nice play all the way around by Aaron Harris. They have knocked off unbeaten Michigan State. The final score, Iowa 83, Michigan State 70. For years at Michigan State, Coach Tom Izzo and football coach Mark D'Antonio have openly talked about their teams ascending to the national championship level. When the Spartan football team reached the college football playoff for the first time in school history, Coach Izzo decided to give his players a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Waking up in Dallas wasn't the plan for anyone on the roster, but came as a welcome surprise for a team that had started strong, despite injuries and players acclimating to their new roles. Bringing him down here was a tough decision because uh, my AD had called me, told me that, you know, you look at the whole thing, we're in Iowa, we're an hour and 40 minutes from here, we're an hour back home, um, chance to come down here, uh, do something with a team that very few schools get to do. Uh, see our former guy, um, Draymond Green, playing a game. You know, it was like the stars were all aligned. And, you know, I said you could go a lifetime and never get back to a Final Four in football or basketball. And uh, to think that, uh, you know, our basketball was at one in 2015 and still 2015, and our football's at a Final Four. And, and uh, you know, I've been amazed how appreciative the players have been to get this opportunity. To experience uh, something like this is a memory maker of all memory makers, and that's kind of the theory I've had here since I got the job, you know, make as many memories for these guys as you can make, and I think this one is going to be as, as good as the most. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 
Everybody be in this together, man. We a team. Let's get better today. Everybody encourage each other, man. Let's go. Natty on three. One, two, three. Natty! Amazing. Uh, you know, just to see, you know, the university having such incredible success. Um, you know, with the basketball team, obviously, we suffered our first loss last night. But, you know, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's one game. Um, and then with the football team, you know, where they're in the college football playoff. You know, I still remember, I think Coach D'Antonio got there a year before I got there. And, um, you know, just to watch the growth that the program has had over the course of these years to being, you know, come, becoming one of the top dogs in the country. You know, it's been amazing. So, you know, to see the university have such great success is always fulfilling for me. Uh, it also gives me a lot of room to talk junk in the locker room, which I enjoy. Enjoy these next couple of days because they've earned that. You know, I'm sure if we were six and seven or six and eight, we wouldn't be here. They wouldn't be here. You know, they've earned that. And so enjoy these next couple of days, but also keep the mind on the big picture and know, you know that. Yeah, we lost at Iowa, but and tough loss. But now we got to turn our focus to Minnesota and get back on track. Bounce back. Don't let the one loss turn to two losses, and two losses turn to three losses. We lost our one game, now bounce back. Soak it all in, you know. You're only gonna go through this, who knows, who knows when. So, um, just for me, just soak it all in and um, try to learn from the Warriors and the NBA game tonight. And as far as tomorrow goes, you know, just cheer the football team on as best as I can. And, and also, we're gonna get some practices in at different facilities and things like that. So we get to see and do a lot. So we got to soak it all in and um, make the most of it. Oh, we were excited. We we didn't know. It was a surprise. And we all were talking about we wanted to come down here. And then he surprised us with it. Coach Iz said him and Coach D'Antonio have been talking about this for years. They just want to be able to go to the Final Four. They want to win the national championship uh, in both sports the same year. And that's a goal that they had. And that's, you know, the goal that they're still going to have in the years to come. After taking in a practice at the Dallas Mavericks practice facility, watching former Spartan star Draymond Green play for the NBA champion Golden State Warriors, and watching their Spartan football brothers play for a chance at the College Football National Championship, the trip to Texas was a perfect digression for a team that started the season strong. You know, when I set this up, it was it had to be almost three weeks ago, and uh, you know, then we. We had some tough games. We had the Denzel injury. We had the death of my father. Um, there were so many things that happened in this period of time, and some might think, you know, wow, that's a lot on the plate. But in a way, um, whenever you go through some adversity, whether it be a death, whether it be an injury that is, is big, there's nothing like being with the guys that you care about most. And I think this gives us that opportunity. You know, some will question coming down here um, this has been the most positive experience we've had, and I think it's going to help not only our team, not only our program, I think our athletic department, I think our whole university. It shows the unity that we have here as Spartans, and that's pretty cool. Texas, the land of cowboy boots, Friday night lights, and longhorns. 30 minutes south of Dallas lies a villa a town large enough for the McQuaid family to call home, but too small to have its own school district. In nearby Duncanville, a district recognized for its many state championship sports teams, Matt McQuaid had his humble beginnings. Well, Rob was a basketball coach, and um, when the kids were little, they went to the gym with him. I was a flight attendant, and I was home during the week, and I flew on the weekend, so they would go to the gym with him, and um, they grew up in the gym. I used to go up with him and uh, watch the older guys practice and try and play and shoot with them. And that got me really involved in my, like, like the first summer I went up there with him, I instantly fell in love with the game and I just wanted to play. He'd come to the, he'd always go to my practices and he would, he would always emulate the guys in my practice. He would, he would run up and down the floor on the sideline if we were in a fast break drill and he'd be dribbling and he'd be, talking to himself and he'd be his own announcer and <laughs> he just he was in his own world and he did that and uh, and growing up and it was it was incredible to watch as the youngest of three siblings Matt has been around athletics his whole life his dad played basketball at Central Michigan and Midwestern State University his grandpa and uncle played at New Mexico 
His brother golfed in college, and his sister now plays volleyball internationally after a collegiate career at Alabama. I just have a passion for the game. I, I love playing it. Like, if I take two days off, I already miss it. You know, I can't. I just always went in the gym and be working, and the relationships you make on the way, it's amazing, Like, it can, and it takes you so far. When Matt was in second grade and I, I, I saw the passion he had, what I did is uh, he was playing just a little rec ball. So YMCA. I read YMCA. The first thing we did, this is funny, we, uh, we took him to inner city Dallas and put him on a second grade team. He and was uh, he was five. We put him in there and uh, we wanted to see what he was, you know, you either gonna get after it or you're gonna get run out of there. <laughs> we were in downtown Dallas and uh, he got after it. It was amazing. And uh, at that point, I said, well, he, we need to get out of the wreck. We started a team in second grade, and we started going to the AAU National Tournament in second grade. And we went every year through eighth grade. And uh, we had a team and, and uh, started coaching them in second grade and tried to basically create an elite level team. And by the time they got to eighth grade, we were, uh, we were one of the top. We lost in the national championship. In high school, we went and we played in what's called the EYBL, which is the Nike Elite League, and we played in that from ninth grade till 11th grade, and uh, we played against the best of the best. I saw him, he was committed to SMU, and uh, you know, from right there, and uh, I was sitting with Larry Brown of all things, and I saw this kid in Vegas, and he was making every shot, and I said, wow, he's a heck of a shooter. He said, yeah, he's been committed to us, and, and then, some things happened down there and he just decommitted and when he did uh, Larry had told me that he was from his dad was from Michigan and so his dad is from the Midland area and so we contacted him and uh, sure enough it all worked out and he's been a pleasant surprise in July 2014 after playing in front of the biggest college coaches in the country Matt McQuaid informed SMU coach Larry Brown his intentions to reopen his recruiting. I chose SMU before any, any of them, and I hadn't taken any visits. So I was kind of like, always had that thing when I was committed there, I was like, you know, that what if, I feel like I kind of rushed it. So I decommitted and kind of took a look at my options and took my visits and I felt better. And uh, that's why I came here. When he was there on the visit, number one, the players all, how, how, there were a lot of kids that real, they were real nice to him. You know, and it was all about genuinely. Genuinely, they wanted to help him. You know, they had suggestions, this and that, and uh, you know, and it, it did feel good to him. And, you know, because it was a long ways away. And you know, when you're going to go a long ways away and you're going to hang out with those guys, you better feel like you're 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 included in them. The second thing was was the number of alumni players, how they ended up treating him, and that was more amazing to him, I think, than anything really felt like it was a family atmosphere. Everybody talks about it, but it's it's a feeling you gotta get. Family tradition here. You know, I saw like Draymond, all the guys that come back, that's crazy. You don't see that at a lot of places. Like Draymond, Mateen, Steve Smith, they're always giving back, always trying to handle advice. And when I was hanging out with the team on my visit, everybody took me in like I was their little brother and I was saying a lot. To date, McQuaid has made a solid first impression as a Spartan, most notably in his play against Kansas in November. McQuaid's energy and passion propelled him to a 100% performance from beyond the arc and an emphatic block to put the Jayhawks away. It's performances like these that have made the freshman stand out in his short time at MSU. He's been a pleasant surprise. I mean, not rated as high as I think he should have been, thank God, because uh, we were able to get him, and uh, he's been Mr. Big Shot for us. You know, he's been to the Chauncey Billups of our team. He's hit big shots against uh, Louisville, big shots against Kansas, big shots against Providence. It seems like he's made some big shots. He's still not in the groove. I mean, he's a phenomenal shooter, and he's, he's still missing some shots here and there, and it's because I'm playing him at the point. Um, he's really a natural, too, and uh, you go to the point, you got to make decisions and shoot, and it's been a little bit of a, a you know, strain on him, but it's going to make him better in the long run, and I think he is uh, so much better defensively than I thought he would be. So Matt McQuaid has been uh, 
a little bit of a surprise, but an incredible help to uh, this year's team. Everyone, when they first meet Matt, thinks he, they think he's really quiet, but Matt has a very crazy sense of humor and he makes um, unusual observations on things going around him and as you get to know him, he loosens up about stuff like that. When he's on the court, it's just, it's amazing to see how passionate he is and how and he focused. plays. And focused. yeah. I, um, I just, I go with the flow on the court. I just, I have a passion for the game and sometimes I just let my emotions take over. For McQuaid, it's not all about scoring. Many Michigan State fans have already noted the Texas freshman's fiery passion for the game and bombastic reactions on the court as he tries to pump up the team and help the Spartans in any way that he can. <laughs> they make fun of the emotions after the game. They see the pictures and stuff. They'll say a couple things, but um, on the court, I feel like they kind of get them going and uh, it brings energy. Tough pass. Oh, a star is born. <laughs> He's going to be a big man on campus, Dan. I'm as big as you in Canada. We used to sit here and we would watch games on Saturday and we would watch for three, four hours, watch teams play, talk about it, laugh about it, you know, and we'd sit here and, you know, hey, well, you know, do you ever see your, someday you ever gonna play on ESPN? Or are you gonna be on Highlight? We'd joke about it, laugh about it. And um, when, when Kentucky lost and Michigan State got the number one ranking, the first text I got, I got from him and he said, Dad, did you ever think I'd ever be playing for the number one team in the country? and it just floored me. And I said, you know, life works in crazy ways, man. It's, it's, it, it's amazing. And I said, you know, it, it was, it's just surreal to be able to sit there and watch your kid do something like that that you've coached since he was in second grade. I just want to see myself grow and uh, develop into a better person and a better student athlete, take in more and learn more. Uh, the older I get, the more people I can help and uh, teach from my mistakes. I'm just enjoying it right now, taking in everything in. I mean, coming in from high school to being a freshman here and having like being a part of this great team, Coach Izzo, uh, it's a really great experience and um, hopefully we can continue to keep winning and hopefully win a national championship. No matter how you look at it, no matter how you spin it, a loss of any sort is not a way anyone would choose to start a season. But much like Mac McQuay's journey from Texas to Michigan State, the Spartans, too, face a long road filled with just as many surprises as rewards. Our defense is good. The best defense won. Okay? you got to be able to guard people to win big games. Everybody is going to do that collectively, together. Let's go get some. Welcome to the barn, Williams Arena, on the campus of the University of Minnesota, and welcome to day six of our road trip. We left a long time ago. We got one game to go, and then we get to come home. And it's been memorable. It's been Iowa City. It's been, it's been Dallas. Kind of a tough football game, but nonetheless, we're playing in the national championship picture. And then we hop on a plane, and here we are in Minneapolis. Pass down low to Costello, down on Tanate, kicks into the corner to Forbes. Forbes with a stepping right shot that's good. It's a two just inside the three-point lane. Now back to Forbes. Forbes drives towards the basket. Now to Costello, hands it over to Nairn. Here comes the shot. And from the elbow, Nairn beats the clock and gets his first two of the game. Stolen away. Here comes Dorsey. Fires ahead to McBrayer. The lob to Murphy. He catches under the basket and gets a two-hand dunk. And we're tied. And now to Kenny Goins and over to Forbes. Here's a three. He got it. Against Iowa, Michigan State only had three for the whole game. We got a good one so far. Here's a step back, high arcing shot by Dorsey. That's good, a 17-footer. That's the first time we've seen that in his arsenal. On the weave to Forbes. Forbes in three-point range, doesn't shoot. McQuaid, lob pass down low to Davis. His first real touch of the game, he's backing in. Here comes his hook, bank shot, it's good. He's on the board. Well, they got the ball where they want to get it. That time they got the ball in a real nice location at the follow. Forbes forced to throw up a three and of course, 
It goes in. Well, when you're a good shooter, everything goes. Around the top of the circle, no. Rebound, Goins. Flips it out to Tom. We're on the move. Five pass Costello. Oh, what a slam by Matt Costello. And he was fouled to boot. Chance to get the lead to double digits for the first time today for Michigan State. Deontay Davis works on King, who's got three. He gets that to go, and it leads 10. On the gopher bench to Mason. Mason turns the corner into the paint, kicks to King. Wide open, look three left side. Good! He knocked down his first bucket of the night. Ball comes from the side into Harris. Now the Forbes off a pick for three. He got it. And Brent Forbes has four of them. So on the road for six days, Michigan State will come home winning this one. Final for Minneapolis. It's Michigan State 69, Minnesota 61. A Big Ten record evens up at one apiece. Hey, hold on, y'all. Hey, hold on, y'all. Hey, I know it's been, a, it's been a rough week, you know, with Coach Dad's passing, but, you know, we, we got one on the road. It's the game ball for you, Coach.